Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is another wonderful, wonderful, beautiful day. Hi, I'm Pearly Martin, and I dropped in briefly because I wanted to talk about how love is our greatest weapon of warfare. You know, I'm talking about the agape kind of love. I'm talking about God's kind of love. You know, it was because God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. It was his love for us that motivated him to give. It was his love for us. God is love. How many of you know that? First John 4 and 7 tells us. That's where I'm coming from, First John 4. Read the whole chapter of 1 John and 4, please. Um, uh, for God, God is love. First John and four tells us that God is love, and everyone who love has been born of God, right? And they know God because love is who God is. In order, in order, if I say that I love God, who I can't see, and I hate my brother, who I can see, then I, he said, you know what? You are a liar, and the truth is not in you. So, love is for God. The Bible says that the way we'll know His disciples is by the love that we have for one another, right? Love is our weapon of warfare. Love is our greatest weapon of warfare. The Bible teaches us that love overcomes evil, right? God is love and the devil is evil. So what he's saying is God, who is love, overcomes the devil who's evil, right? So God is opposite to evil. God is, when we do what God say do, every time we do what God say do, we're walking in love. How many of you know that? Because to know, to love God is to obey God, right? To, to, to love God is to obey God and to obey God is to know God because we're not going to be able, we're not going to obey somebody we don't know. So like always, like I say, fellowship, fellowship, I mean, relationship, relationship, fellowship, relationship, you know, we have to spend time getting to know God. I made that video the other day. So to walk in a God's agape love is to walk in the fruits of the spirit. Um, for God so loved, God's love is self-sacrificing, right? It was Jesus loved us. Oh, he sacrificed himself for us. And that's what love is. Love is self-sacrificing. God's love, the agape love, not the phileo love, the not the human kind of love. God's love is unconditional. It's not a feeling. So it has nothing to do. I know for a fact that Jesus did not feel like going to the cross because he was in the garden of Gethsemane. He, that's what the prayer was about. He didn't want to do it. His flesh did not want to do it. He had a flesh like us, y'all. He, he was sweating great drops of blood. He did not want to do it. He was in that garden. He was praying. He said, Father, nevertheless, I'm not my will, but let your will be done. Uh, he did it because of his love for his father and his, that's, you know, love is an action word. And um, people said, don't show, tell me you love me. I can know that you love me by the way that you treat me. We're not talking about um, phileo love. We're not, I don't, I fell in love and I fell out of love. That's that flesh phileo love. I'm talking about the agape kind of love. The agape kind of love can really can cause you to pray for your enemies. It really can. The agape kind of love, because see, God's love is not conditional. It's not, I love you when you do good and I don't love you when you don't do good. No, God loves people who died and went to hell. God, see, love is who God is. So when God, uh, when God is uh, loving on us, that's just him being himself. He's expressing who he is. Love is who God is. It's not that just God loves us. Love is who God is. And so uh, that's why he you, we, he can't go in opposition to him who he is. That's why we don't forgive. He can't forgive because for, unforgiveness is not lovely. He can't go against himself. Love is who God is. Love is an action word. Love is an action word for God so loved that he gave. Our giving is connected to our loving. At where man treasure is, where, wherever his heart is, that's where his treasure is also. Um, I, so your love is connected to your giving. Love is an action word. Love is our motive. Whatever we do in word or deed, he tells us that we're supposed to do it as unto the Lord. But guess what? If we don't know the Lord and we're still doing our religious acts, then it's not being done unto the Lord because no relationship is works. It's legalism. It's, it's the law. But um, love is our greatest weapon of warfare. The Bible says God is love. 
God is love. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. His chill, um, so anyone who loves is born of God. We're, when we get born again, the spirit of the living God comes to live down on the inside of us. How I many of you know that? So we have the love of God abiding inside of us. We have his we have his nature. We have the fruits of the spirit already in us, but we have to allow them to be developed. He said tribulations produces character of uh, patience. Tribulations produce patience and patience produce character. The fruits must be developed so they can begin to be manifested. Um, as we begin to grow in the Lord, the fruits of the spirit will begin to manifest. Those who are the S-O-N, sons of God, are led by the spirit of God. As we begin to grow in the Lord, we will begin to be able to discern his voice. But we have to know God's word too, to know his voice. We have to know the character of Christ. We have to be able to discern good from evil and right from wrong. We have to know what's God and what's not. And uh, the way we can know that is it, uh, according to his word. You know, there is a gift discerning of the spirits, but also God and his word is one. So when I know God's word, I know his nature. I know his characteristics. When I know that he said in John 10, 10, that he can, he's a good shepherd and he come that we might have life and life more abundantly. But then he says, but the thief, he coming not, but the kill still and destroy. Okay. So the nature of God is he's not here to kill, still and destroy. So this can't be God because this is killing, stealing and destroying. You see, so we take everything, we measure it to and in line with the word of God. This is why we have to do what Romans 12, 1 and 2 says. To uh, be not conformed to the world. First, we're going to present our bodies living sacrifice. Be not conformed to the world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind so you will know what his good, acceptable, and perfect will. We cannot know the will of God outside of the word of God. Now, don't give me the Holy Spirit. Even when he speaks, he's always going to speak uh, according to God's word. He only say what he hears father say. Uh, he only do what he see his father do, you know? Um, so we have to get in the word. Just like I keep saying, we have to study, not just read it, but ask God to give you a revelation of whatever it is that you want to know. We all have questions. God, why did you say this? God, why is this happening? God, this, 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 whatever the question is, um, begin to get in that concordance and look up words pertaining to whatever it is you want to know. Um, for, cause for real, there is really a problem, a promise for every problem. And God has an answer to every question. Oh my gosh. Do you know that? Cause he's all knowing he's on omnipotent and he's omnipresent. That means he's omnipotent means he's all knowing and he's omnipresent, meaning he's everywhere at the exact same time. That's what makes him God. So he, that's why he's a present help in our time of trouble. He's in the trouble before we get in the trouble. Um, he's not just with, he's not just in us. I mean, with us, but God as believers is inside of us. Our body is the temple of the Holy ghost. Right? So, um, we are partakers of his divine nature um, because we were created in his image and his likeness, right? His spirit, he created man in his own image and after his own likeness. And so as born again believers, um, the seed is within itself and it should be reproducing after its own kind. This is why Jesus said, a bad tree cannot bear bad fruit and a good tree cannot bear good fruit because it's the seed. The seed, if it's a good seed, it should be producing good fruit. Jesus said, you'll know them by their fruit. Why? Because the devil knows the word, but the devil cannot live the word because a bad seed cannot produce a good fruit. When the seed is bad, then the the, the tree's going to be bad. And if the tree's going to be bad, then the fruit's going to be bad. But if the seed is good, then the tree is good and the fruit's going to be good. Um, let's we begin to grow, um, uh, water ourselves with the word. So the fruits of the spirit can begin to grow up. And people can see the fruits of the spirit in us and be drawn to the God that's inside of us. Jesus said, if you say that you, uh, well, if you abide in me and I abide in you, if, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask whatever it is that you will. Why is this? Because when we're abiding in him and his words abiding in us, we're going to be asking things according to his will. We have to get in the word of God. This is the only thing um, that the enemy has to respond to is the word of God. Notice that when he came to tempt Jesus in the will when he was fasting for 40 days, what did Jesus tell him? It is written. It's already been stated. Uh, it's already been said that 
you shall not tempt the, the Son of God. A man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Um, we're to live out of the words that's been, by faith, we're supposed to lead by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. This n- not just natural food, but we need spiritual food. He's saying man shall not live by bread alone. We're going to need some spiritual food. This natural food is not going to be enough, especially in this <laughs> In this end time, we're going to have to be fervent. We're going to have to live for Christ intentionally. We're going to have to watch our mindsets, our thoughts. We're going to have to be intentional about this. We're going to have to do it on purpose. This Sunday morning supper or breakfast, that's not going to get it anymore. We're going to keep our mind stayed on the Lord Jesus Christ so we can stay focused and uh, not faint and not grow weary. Um if, uh, make sure you're finding someone to encourage because we, as the body of Christ, the, the word says, the way you'll know my disciples is by the love they have for one another. So let's begin to, as believers, we should be loving on each other and not just loving on each other, but loving on the world as, as well, because it's through our act of kindness and it's through the love that we have that people be, are able to see the God that we serve because God is love. And so when we're walking in love, we're expressing our heavenly father. This is how you'll know my disciples by the love they have for one another. Uh, as, as believers, you should, if you're near your sister or brother in other countries or wherever, we need to be tending to one another. We need to be past, you know, pastors need to be tending to their sheep. Um, we need to be tending to one another. And um, remember, like I said, in this season, um, you know, in the book of Acts, they they helped each other and everybody had everything that they needed. That's what happened in the book of Acts. And that's how it should be today in the body of Christ. So um, um, if you belong to a local church or whatever, uh, you need to, if you there are some things you need, you should be checking in with your church to see if they can help you with what it is that you need. Um, but uh, or your sisters and brothers, if we see somebody that needs something, you know, if you know somebody that needs something, uh, I was talking to someone and they was telling me I was texting them yesterday and they said, well, I get back with you. I'm helping someone. And um, what I've come to find out what they were doing was it was this lady that was uh, standing on in the middle of the road and just trying to flag down people. And and she said she wasn't even going that way. Uh, she done missed her whole street. She wasn't even really paying attention. The Lord was leading her. And she and before she knew it, she had passed the street she's supposed to be going on. But then, then she saw the lady. You know, how many of you know that God will give us the divine assignments? And you need to be uh, aware of entertaining strangers because you could be entertaining an angel unaware. So the Lord led her there. He, he led her there. And uh, she stopped. And the lady said, can you just get me and my kids a pizza? She wasn't even asking for money. She wanted something to eat, you know. Um, But you know what? That's what we got the Holy Spirit for. Some people won't give at all because, well, what if they trying to get over? That's just a stingy attitude. And that's just the if Proverbs say, if you be stingy, you're going to be poor. You're going to have nothing, you know. Um, That's just a way of not being able to do anything for anybody because really it's just a stingy person's attitude. If you don't give, if you don't give, don't. Don't expect the harvest. You're reaping what you sow. When no one ever gives to me, that's because you're not be, you're not giving to anyone, or anyone else. And when we give, um, we give without expecting to receive. What that's saying is we're not expecting God to to give it back because He is. You just don't be looking for that person, that same person, to give it back. If you've given it to them as a gift, then it's going to come back to you, but not maybe not from that same person. So we have to be conscious and be aware of God's presence and um, know when he's working, know when you're reaping your harvest. But in everything and in all things, we all always is to give God glory, honor, thanks, and praise. So um, let's be givers um, because that's what love is for God. So love that he gave. Um, you shouldn't have to know someone to help someone. You shouldn't have to know someone to love someone because God's love is not, his love is is not conditioned based upon uh, my relationship with you. It's not based upon my behavior. It's based upon who he is. It's God's grace and mercy that sustain me 
all those years. I did not know him. I could have died and went to hell. You know, I'm, I'm so grateful for God's grace and his mercy. But um, God used people. You know, you, you keep thinking God is going to come and do it. God, Jesus is not coming down from heaven to do anything. He's already given us the authority in the earth. We have authority in the earth. When he, uh, when he, when he said it was finished, it was done, it's already finished. Now he said, I'm going to give you the keys to the kingdom and I need for you to do what you saw me do. I fed the hungry. I didn't just cast out devils and I didn't just pray for people and I didn't just teach in the temples, but I was literally in the ditches. I was in the ditches with the people. I fed, After I finished preaching to the people, I fed the multitude. You know, Jesus, he did stuff. He ministered not just to the physical needs. I gave them wine at the wedding. You know, when you can make wine that don't make you drunk or mess with your personality, then you can turn water. You know, I'm the, I'm going to get off of that subject. But um, it, it's not going to change your influence. Anyways, I'm going to get off of that. But what I'm saying is Jesus didn't just minister to the spiritual needs of people. He ministered to the physical needs of people. And when we start... um. Uh, I'm walking in the love of God, you're going to run up in some people with some real needs and you're not going to be able to pray it away. Not every need is your need too. You know, we, we want to understand and know that, that not every need is your need. Not every person is your assignment. So, um, but this is what the Holy Spirit is in, is, is in us for. So we're, we're going to have to, you know, spend more time with the Lord so we can be really sensitive to the leading of the Holy Ghost. He will let you know if this person is trying to be a schemer or, and, and sometimes you may have, have you give it to a schemer so they can be convicted. You know, um, it's about being led by the Holy Spirit. It's about you. You don't have to worry about don't you don't have to protect yourself. That's the that's the job of the Holy Spirit to lead God and direct us in all truth. So we're going to have to really spend time in the word, really spend time in prayer, really spend time in worship, really being a conscious of God's presence all throughout your day. Um, so when someone is standing in your face and they're just constantly talking, you realize, hey, this is my assignment. <laughs> okay, because you know what? He that when his souls is wise, the Holy Spirit will show you how to take a conversation and twist it where you can get him in it. You know, I've had that happen in the grocery stores. The lady get to talk. Well, how, how are you doing? Oh, I'm doing great. Oh, I'm doing blessed. I'm just having an awesome day today. Well, you know what? He started telling me to tell people uh, just to tell them I'm, I'm glad that I'm alive. Because everyone can relate to that. And boy, you know, you're absolutely right. And then guess what? That's a door. Boy, you just slide on in there. And, and you know, Christ, you know, he, he, he gets, he that when his souls is wise. In other words, God will give you wisdom because you can't go to everybody saying, uh, Jesus love you. You want to accept him? No, that don't work like that for everybody. Uh, he that when his souls is wise, God will give you his wisdom because it takes skills. Be wise as a serpent, but gentle as a dove. He will give you his wisdom to know how to connect, to know how to slide him off in that conversation. So be slow, be quick to hear it. Uh, and slow to speak. Um, cause while they're talking, the Holy Spirit, can be, he'll be talking to you while they're talking and, you know, and the gifts can begin to operate and he can begin to talk to you and say, they acting like that because they have a root of rejection. And, you know, uh, and when God knows this too, that when God shows us something, it's always for redemption. It's always for us to re help restore the person. So whatever the devil's got them feeling, we need to speak the opposite to lift them up. You know, if they're, if they're, they're they got low self-esteem. I mean, I've talked to people. I only like saying low self-esteem self-esteem. Uh, it's about just not knowing who you are in Christ. Um, you know, people do different things for different reasons. Uh, um, so when when they get the saying stuff and the Holy Spirit start, you know, giving you words of knowledge and letting you know what's really going on, allowing you to see some things behind the scene. Um, the whole purpose of that is not just so you can know, but it's so you can pray. Okay, Holy Spirit, what you want me to do with this? Or so you can restore. God is a God of restoration. Um, so when you see somebody dealing with the, uh, with uh, pride or you see, st dealing with uh, envy, um, that's just because they forgot how special they are. So when somebody's dealing with envy, um, you know, just begin to restore them and encourage them in who they are. You know, you don't have to say, oh, you're jealous. You don't have to say any of that. Just begin to restore, you know, encourage them. Girl, God can use you too. You know, there's no big eyes or little use in the kingdom. You know, um, God has a specific plan and purpose just for you. No one else can do what God has called you to do. You know, just begin to encourage and restore that person when you see these factors um, operating in our lives. But 
um, I don't know how I'm getting over there, but, but anyways, um, that's what love is. Love is redemptive. God redeemed us. Jesus redeemed us because he so loved us. You know, he had that re love relationship with his father. He said, I only do what I see my father. Do you only say what I hear my father? Say. Jesus said, how do you, can you say you love me? If you, uh, why you say you love me, you don't do what I say. So again, I like to reiterate and say those things that we know to do. I'm talking about the things that we know to do. God expects for us to do them. So that's that right there alone is an open Bible study because, you know, uh, a lot of times we're well versed in scriptures, but we don't really know how to do what we know. And uh, a lot of times we don't even know what it really means. We just saying it. we're more than a conqueror. OK, so what does that mean? That means that what Jesus, what what we're going through, Christ has already been through and we're just reaping the benefits of his labor. He said it's already finished. You know, you don't have to take stripes on your back to be healed. I took the stripes on my back and you get to reap the benefits of being healed. You see, uh, so a lot of times we know what scriptures say, but we don't really understand what they mean. So that's a good place to start. Lord, how do you put on anger? How do you take off anger? You know, uh, Lord, how do you guard your heart? You know, um, there's a lot of things we say, keep your mind stayed on the Lord. Lord, how do you keep your mind stayed on the Lord? By focusing on his word, by uh, being, we have to be intentional about it. We can't, you know, put God over here and say, okay, God, we're going to put you over here. I'm going to put you on and take you off. When I get around this set of people, I'm going to take you off. When I get around this people, oh, I can't wait till I get back to church. No, you're the church. Um, the spirit of the living God is on the inside of you. He, it's time to get a one-on-one -on -one relationship with him. We have to get a one-on-one -on -one relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to end here. Remember that love is our greatest weapon because when we're walking in love, every time we walk in love, we're overcoming evil. Love overcomes evil. So, and uh, if, if we read the word of God, we'll see that the Beatitudes, Jesus says to bless those that curse you. He's opposite. God is opposite of evil. So the Holy Spirit is always going to tell you to do the, uh, the a kind thing in response to an evil thing. And I'm not talking about being in an abusive relationship, stuff like that. But he's always going to give you something kind, opposite to the evil because love overcomes evil. He's going to give you something opposite. They, I, I remember once someone said to me, F you. And I said, well, you know, for that, I'm going to say, God bless you. Because he told me to bless those that curse you. And it's not just a curse word. When people are speaking evil against you, those are curses. Okay, so you're never going to be anything. You're always going to be this. Or that. That's cursing. You know, but this person actually said uh, uh, the curse word, F you. And um, God, I said, for that F you, I'm going to say, God bless you. How about that? Because he told me, to, and I said it just like that. He told me to bless those that curse you, you know, and pray for those that despitefully use you. And guess what happened to that person? It humbled them and they had to come back and apologize because they got convicted. So, um, you know what? The word of God really does work and we can't take quit taking stuff personal. Ephesians 6, 12. Are you still angry about someone else's issues? Because, uh, you know, that's where anger really comes from. Ephesians 6 and 12 reminds us that we're not walk, uh, wrestling against flesh and blood, but against prince, powers, powers, and rulers of dark places. Let's keep down the forefronts of our mind that our fight is not against each other. Our fight, you know, it's the enemy using them to influence them. You know, the same way God used people to, to uh, express himself is the same way that the devil used people to express himself through. Um, I don't, I don't, um, so let's walk in love because love overcomes evil. Love is our greatest weapon of warfare. First Corinthians 13, uh, two says, um, you know, if we have not love, we're just a clean and sound. We can have faith to move mountains. We can have all knowledge to know under all of God's mysteries. You know, we can, we can give our body to burn. We can feed all the poor everywhere, whatever. But what I'm saying, what he's saying is if we don't have love, it doesn't matter what we do. Faith work about love. If we don't have love, it don't, we don't have anything because our works are going to be tried by fire. Okay, so whatever we do in word or deed, we want to do it unto the Lord Jesus Christ. What does God's word say concerning the situation or the circumstance that you're dealing with, the situation, circumstances that you're in? Find out what God's word says and do it. Um, for those who put their trust in the Lord, he said he will not cause us to be ashamed. And Father God, we just thank you for being in the midst of us. You said we're two or three are joined together. There you are, Father God. We just thank you that you said for those who put their trust 
trust and faith in you that your word will not return unto you void, Father God. We thank you that those this words, the, your word that has been spoken today, Father, will be landed in good soil. Um, the enemy will not be able to steal this word because we will be a doer of your word. For you said it's the doer of your word that's blessed and not the hearer only. So, Holy Spirit, we thank you. And we, uh, Father, we thank you today that your Holy Spirit, who's our comforter, our teacher, our helper, Father God, that he will help us to do what you, uh, you're you asking us to do today, Father. We will practice walking in love. We will be intentional about it. Um, and we just give you the glory, the honor, and the praise for our desire is your desire to fulfill your desire. We will bear fruit again today, Father. We thank you for using us for a labor uh, as we go about our day today to um, sow a word of wisdom, a word of encouragement, a smile, or something. And we just give you the glory, the honor, Father. And we say here, use us however you see fit in Jesus name. You guys be blessed, be encouraged. Again, this is Pearly Martin. You guys keep looking for the good in your day so you can see God's goodness all throughout your day. Our next giveaway is June 20th. It's, we're going to do our Father's Day giveaway. We want to love on our fathers. Men, this is for you. Um, when God um, thought about a father, he, he created, he thought about you and he created you. And uh, men, God created you on purpose for a purpose and you have a purpose. And um. God needs you. Your children need you. Your wife needs you. Your family needs you. Uh, the man is the head of the house. Um, so man up today. Let God be your role model. Sometimes men be like, well, I ain't had no role model. Well, let, you let your heavenly father uh, be your role model. Let him mentor you into the man that he has called and created you to be. I'm going to end it here. Uh, again, we're going to be at the Rosemont, um, but we're like this time we're giving to the fathers. It's like 270 some residents or something like that over there. So we're trying to cover that property to as many people as we can. We're doing different uh, people each and every time. So if you guys would like to donate to us, uh, inbox me here. Um, you guys join the prayer room if you'd like to pray. Be, be blessed, be encouraged. Once again, keep looking for the good in your day so you see God's goodness all throughout your day. I'm getting ready to get out here and get on the track. I have been sitting here having Bible study, so I, could, I wanted to just share a little bit with you guys what I was, what the Lord was sharing with me. Um, but God is love. Love overcomes evil. Practice walking in God's love today um, so people can see um, the God in us by the way we live by our expressions to others. Okay, I'm going to end it here. Share it if it's blessed you in any way.